This is Transylvania, a land of castles, mountains and of course Dracula. My first stop in the region is the city of Brasov and its breathtaking surroundings. The journey begins at Bucharest North Railway Station. Good morning from Bucharest, Romania. I am at the magnificent northern train station here and now I'm gonna take a train to Transylvania. So let's go. So this train station looks pretty nice from the outside with its columns. Now let's see what it's like from the inside. First I gotta go buy a ticket because I haven't got one yet. Let's see. Wow, this is a huge train station. Where is the ticket office? So I am going to a city called Brasov in the Carpathian Mountains and there should be a train every hour so I didn't bother to buy a ticket online but where is the ticket office? So I gotta go find that now. Casa de Biete, that seems to be the right place. As I was saying in my Bucharest video, the Romanian language is very similar to other Latin languages and Casa de Bietes, that sounds exactly like Spanish. Merci. Okay, merci. All right, I got my ticket here. I am in Wagon 21. That is the carriage. And I think that this must be the seat number. And the ticket was 59 lei. That is about 12, 13 euros. Very reasonable price for a three hour journey. But look at this, they got these analog schedules here. How cool is that? So somebody has to get up there and change these every few days, I suppose. Wow, that is Romania. A few things here are still quite vintage. Alright, we have been on the road for about one and a half hours and we just started to see the beautiful Carpathian Mountains. I mean, those peaks are absolutely stunning. And this train journey is pretty cool because this is another retro train. I don't know how old it is, but everything looks pretty 80s and 90s. I mean, just look at these seats right here. This is like grandmother's kitchen. Alright, we are in Brasov, Romania. What a beautiful train station. This is definitely from socialist times. But yeah, we are now in Transylvania, the land of castles, mountains and Dracula. And now I gotta go find some kind of transport to the city center where my hostel is located. So I think I can take a bus right here. And here is our bus. It came literally two minutes after I got here. That bus was mega crowded, not a square inch of space left. And yeah, now I'm gonna walk into the medieval core of Brasov here. And then I gotta find my hostel, check in, and then we'll go explore. This is the center of Brasov here. Lovely city, as you can see. Lots of beautifully restored old buildings. And yeah, my hostel is located somewhere in this pedestrian zone here. Here's the room, it's actually a dorm inside a hostel. And yeah, I haven't slept in one of those for quite a while, several years probably. Here's the bathroom, so we are sharing this bathroom. There are four beds here, but yeah, this hostel is located right next to the main square here in Brasov. And I'm not gonna spend any time here anyway, so I decided to sacrifice a bit of comfort. And I'm paying 17 euros a night for a bed here. This bed down there is actually mine. And yeah, that is one of the main reasons to choose this type of accommodation because it is dirt cheap, especially here in Eastern Europe. All right, now let's go have a look at this beautiful medieval city of Brasov here. Just like many places in Central and Eastern Europe, the region of Transylvania changed hands quite often throughout its history. 
it was part of the Kingdom of Hungary and then the Austrian Empire and then after the First World War it became part of the country of Romania which it is to this day of course but yeah this is really the medieval Central European town vibe we got all the colorful houses and then the terraces and over here we have a big church so this is actually Council Square this is the main square here in Brasov and now the interesting thing about this square is that in the Middle Ages this was where public trials and executions were held so if somebody got beheaded or executed however they did it back in those days it would have happened right here and yeah right I just sat down at a local restaurant here and ordered myself a mixed meat stew with some polenta and vegetables and a beer so let's try so we have some sausages and then we also have lamb I think and pork so it's mixed I'm not exactly sure excellent this is just like grandmother's food at home all right that was some amazing food here in Brasov and now I'm gonna go check out the famous black church and here we are this is the black church now this church was built in the 15th century but then a fire burned its facade in the 17th century and apparently that's why it's dark but today some experts actually contest this theory so apparently that's just a myth and it only got dark because of pollution recently but yeah it isn't even black I mean it is mostly beige or grey or whatever but yeah anyways let's see if we can go inside Beautiful church there and now one of the most interesting things about this church apart from the fact that its color may or may not be the result of fire is that it has one of the largest collections of Ottoman Turkish carpets in the entire world and that is the result of trade mostly so this church today has hundreds of Ottoman Turkish carpets which is quite random because we are in the middle of Transylvania here and not Istanbul and yeah we have talked about the Ottomans before on this channel they conquered most of the Balkans in the 15th and 16th centuries but they never managed to fully conquer Romania they actually established a vassal state here but this was never fully part of the Ottoman Empire now my original plan for today was to go up to the mountain by cable car but I just found out that the cable car closes at 4 p.m. and it is now 4 15 p.m. so yeah too late for that but luckily I got another day here so I'll see you guys tomorrow Good morning guys, it is now day two here in Brasov, Romania and what I'm gonna do now is head up to the mountain because on top of that mountain there is a letter sign which looks exactly like the Hollywood letter sign. So yeah, fascinating stuff. Now there are two ways to get up there. You can either do a hike or take a cable car and I think I'm gonna take the cable car and then hike back down. That is the easier solution. So here we have the city walls and then this tower right here is called Hunter's Tower and the city is over there behind those walls and now we're gonna go up to the top of that mountain and I think the cable car should be around there somewhere let's see so here we have some of the sites of Brasov that we saw yesterday this is the black church and then the main square over there and we are here now and we're gonna go up to the viewing platform somewhere up there all right here's the cable car station the line is quite long but I am not in the mood to hike up there which would take about two hours All right, we are now on top of the mountain and here you have a really cool picnic area and of course some shops here. Now let's go find this letter sign. Should be somewhere around here. 
But that is the cool thing about Brashov. There are lots of little hikes here that you can do and you don't have to go very far because these hikes actually start in the city center. And I think that the letter sign must be right up here. Let's go have a look. So I don't know how big these letters are, but you can see them from pretty much anywhere in the city. So they must be quite substantial. Oh, and here they are. They are definitely quite massive. Have a look. This is the Brashov letter sign on the mountain. Wow. So these letters are at least 10 meters high, probably more. Wow, this is cool, this place. Now let's go check out the view. The weather is kind of weird because it is clouding up, but there is still some visibility. So let's go have a look. And this is the view here, quite impressive. So we are at about 1000 meters above sea level and the city is at around 500. So yeah, there's quite an elevation difference here. So yeah, this is the letter sign here in Brashov and it's definitely worth coming up here. You can either do the hike or pay the 15 lei for the uh, cable car ride. But yeah, the weather today isn't great, but still a really cool place. And here we have some of the wildlife that you can see in this area. We have lizards and then butterflies. And there is also a bear park not too far away. So yeah, Romania has quite a sizable bear population. And I actually wanted to go there, but it takes about half a day because you have to go on a tour and I don't really have time for that. But yeah, now I'm gonna hike back down. The trail starts right here and then the letter sign is up there. So yeah, it should take about 45 minutes to get back to the city center. So let's see what this hike is like. Now there is a marked trail as you can see here, but there are quite a lot of rocks and also roots from the trees. So yeah, you do need good shoes here. And my shoes are sneakers as always, but I guess they will do the job. Quite a scenic forest here. And yeah, the city of Brashov is surrounded by what is called the Southern Carpathian Mountains. So the Carpathian Mountains actually continue further north and this isn't the highest part. We are in mid-May right now on a Saturday afternoon. And yeah, there are quite a lot of tourists in the city center and also at the cable car station. I actually had to wait for about 25 minutes before getting a cable car. But yeah, here it is very quiet, as you can see. I guess most people don't want to do this hike, but going down is really easy. I guess going up would be a lot more challenging. But yeah, overall Brashov is a really cool place to visit because there's quite a variety of activities that you can do here and there are also lots of cool places in the region so you could easily spend a week here and just do day trips. And yeah, I won't be able to cover all of those in this video but I will definitely do a day trip tomorrow because this region is obviously very famous for its castles and the legend of Dracula. All right guys, back in the center of Brashov now and yeah, that was a lovely little hike there. Definitely worth doing if you have some time in Brashov here and yeah you could actually do the hike and visit the city in one day if you start early but you know yesterday I got here at around 1 p.m. and by the time I started visiting it was around 1:45. so yeah that was too late to do the hike and visit the city but if you start at 9 a.m. you could easily do the city and the hike in one day just look at the picturesque cobblestone streets of Brashov Romania this is fantastic. And I also wanted to talk about my hostel experience here. So as I mentioned before, I haven't stayed in a dorm for quite a while, probably three or four years. And the reason for that is that I had a few mixed experiences there. Nothing crazy, just mostly people coming and going in the middle of the night. And if you travel long term like myself, then you really need some sleep from time to time. And you need to have a healthy sleeping rhythm. And in a hostel dorm, that is very difficult to achieve. But yeah, here in Brashov the hostel experience was pretty positive. There were three people in the dorm and none of them made any noise and everybody got up at pretty much the same time this morning. So yeah, I would definitely recommend this place, Jugendstube, if you are on a budget or if you just want to stay in a hostel. And yeah, I'm not going to continue filming today because tomorrow I'm going to go on a day trip and that day trip will be part of this video. So I'll see you then. Good morning guys, it is now day 3 here in Transylvania and we are in the town of Bran, about 25 kilometers from the city of Brashov and I got here by taxi from Brashov 
and I actually found three other people in the hostel and we shared the taxi so the total price was 25 euros and I used an app called Bolt which is like the Eastern European Uber and yeah 25 euros divided by four is a pretty good price and yeah this town of Bran right here is the home of Dracula's castle over there. As we are approaching one of the most famous castles in Romania, it's important to clear up who we are actually talking about. So the character of Dracula was invented by an Irish author called Bram Stoker, who lived in the 19th century. Now Bram Stoker's character was obviously fictitious, but it is believed that he based the character on a count called Vlad Tepes or Vlad Dracula. And that was a Romanian count who lived in the 15th century. And this was not actually his castle, but he has a connection to this castle. So Vlad Tepes or Vlad Dracula, also called Vlad the Impaler, spent some time here, but this is not the castle where he actually lived. And this castle right here looks like the castle that Bram Stoker described in his novel, which is why outside of Romania, this castle is often referred to as Dracula's castle. Right, we are now entering the town of Bran here and this place is very touristy and there is a lot of traffic but yeah, let's go inside Dracula's castle. So here's the town of Bran and then the castle is up there on the hill so we need to continue into this direction and then there is an entrance somewhere over there. Here you can see the center of Bran and yeah, this is a very popular day trip destination and it is basically just this street and then a few smaller streets around it but yeah apart from Bran Castle there isn't much in the town itself and I think that Brashov is definitely better as a base because there's just more to do there especially at night as well so yeah now I think we have to walk into this pedestrian zone and then we'll get to the castle let's see so here you can see you have all the terraces and places to get food gotta walk through here this looks pretty tasty though this right here is the main tourist strip in Bran wow lots of shops here now how do I get to the castle so the castle is right up there I think that there is a trail going up there and over there on the building you can see Mr. Dracula that is why this place is famous this is some kind of haunted castle shop something like that yeah the center of Bran here is basically just one big market and you have Dracula merchandise everywhere of course that isn't a big surprise right I think this is the ticket office buy your ticket one price go to payment and here we have our ticket. So the ticket was 55 lei, which is about 11 euros. And yeah, that's not too bad considering that this is one of the most famous places in all of Romania. So it is not exactly clear when this castle was built, but there are documents confirming that there was a castle here in the 13th century, but that one was destroyed. So yeah, this one isn't as old but it was probably built in the 15th century because it was used back then to defend the lands of Wallachia against the Ottoman Empire. Climbing up the steps to go inside Dracula's castle. So here we have all the rulers of Bran Castle and as I mentioned before, the first documented rulers lived here in the 13th century and then over here we have Vlad Tepes who is the person that served as inspiration for Bram Stoker's Dracula. These are some of the entrance gates to Bram Castle. And then here we have a little courtyard. But I think that we gotta continue into this direction. Some wooden medieval stairs. Let's see where this leads to. This right here is actually the bedroom of Queen Mary of Romania, who lived in the 19th century. And yeah, the Romanian royal family also used this castle and that was before Romania became a republic in the 20th century. Here we have some more rooms that belong to the Romanian royal family. Wow, this is actually original, I think. So yeah, in the 19th century, the Romanian royals were using this castle as a residence in Transylvania. 
All right, now let's walk up here through this very narrow staircase. There is a bit of a traffic jam here. But yeah, this is a very narrow staircase inside the rock. So it's not for people who are too tall. All right, we are now on the balcony of Brand Castle overlooking the inner courtyard. And yeah, they also have all these medieval weapons and armor and all that stuff. And yeah, the connection to the actual character of Vlad Tepes here is minimal. So yeah, you won't find a lot of Dracula stuff inside. But still, this castle is pretty impressive. And it is in a very good state as well, because it was used by the Romanian royal family as recently as the early 20th century. But yeah, if this castle had no connection to the character of Dracula, from Bram Stoker's novel, then I think that a lot of foreigners wouldn't come here. All right, here we have some kind of tunnel and apparently it has a very special elevator and you have to buy an extra ticket for that. So I just got that ticket, it was 20 lei, which is about 4 euros. And yeah, let's see what this tunnel is like. So this is the elevator that we just took and that was pretty cool because they have these screens with dragon and bat simulations. And yeah, we are now inside the tunnel here. This is the tunnel right here and they have all these screens with different types of movies playing. And yeah, a medieval sword and a burning forest. So yeah, this is part of Bran Castle, but you have to buy a second ticket for that. And here we have some ghosts. All right, let's see, is there more? Wow, this is quite a big tunnel actually. And yeah, this is Bran Castle. And now you can actually see me in that picture. Wow, this is cool. I didn't expect that. And we are now walking through the park around Brand Castle up there and yeah we got out via this tunnel over there but we started the visit on the other side and yeah it is quite funny that because Bram Stoker described a castle which looked kind of similar to this one that today it is known as Dracula's castle because Bram Stoker never actually visited Romania let alone this castle so apparently he described it by getting pictures from other people that had been to Romania before. So that is Bran Castle, the legend and the myth of Dracula. But Bran Castle is definitely worth visiting. You have all these medieval exhibitions and then the tunnel, which is pretty cool. And yeah, I wouldn't stay here in the village because apart from people visiting the castle, there is really nothing going on here. Brasov is definitely better as a base. And that is it from Bran here, but not from Romania. I actually got a few more days in the country, so there will be more Romanian adventures. And yeah, thanks very much for watching and see you in the next one. Goodbye.